Let's bring in our friend Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center at Akron Children's Hospital. We like to talk sports medicine with Dr. Joe, certainly each and every week. Joe, what do you have for us today? Ray, you know, it's been a long time. I don't know that I've spoken to you in a while about one of the most common conditions that we see at sports medicine in young athletes. You know that we kind of specialize in younger athletes, and there's a condition that occurs around the foot and ankle. It's actually in the heel, uh, and it's a growth plate problem that many young athletes um, struggle with, and it limits their sporting activity. And it's sometimes the first reason why I've seen these kids. And years later, I'll see them, and they say, Oh, doctor, do you remember when you saw me for my Seavers disease? There's a thing called Seavers disease, Ray, that's exceedingly common. And when you have young athletes who play a lot of sport between the ages of about 8 and 13, kids are very prone to having this condition, particularly if they're playing running sports, if they're playing these sports over and over again where they're continuously going like travel teams and so forth are very, very common. And believe it or not, this was described by Dr. Siever back in 1919, almost 100 years ago for the first time. And so in my practice of coming up on nearly 30 years, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of cases. And these young kids, the parents will describe to me that for three weeks, six weeks, a month, a couple months now, after they play, they limp when they play, they need to get helped off the court, they're in tears and crying and pain, and it's, it can be a real significant problem. So it starts out in the heel, there's a growth plate, and you know we have many of these growth plates throughout the body, we have about uh, 210 to 215 of these growth plates, and in young athletes, the growth plates are weaker than the tendons and the ligaments, and so what, and, and the bones. And so what happens is these are the first structures to get overloaded. And kids will get, first of all, swelling of the growth plate and later on stress fractures of the growth plate. And they'll limp around and have pain for a long time. And they just, uh, you know, are wit, at wit's end. Many people will tell them because it's around the heel, oh, it's Achilles tendonitis, which is what adults get, or it's plantar fasciitis, what these runners, you know, our weekend warrior runners get. But it's really not because it's not in the tendon, it's in the growth plate. And simply when we can get kids to take a rest, one of the things that was great about 20 years ago, we started using the fracture walker boots instead of a cast. We put the kids in a fracture walker boot, we get them to rest, we get them going on a stretching and strengthening program and proper mechanics. And they go back to sport and do quite well with Seavers. So it's a real winner down at the Sports Medicine Center when you take a kid who, you know, is limping around, playing with pain for perhaps months, and in a very short period of time with some rest and rehab, you get them back playing quite a bit. And we've made kind of a career on a condition that's very, very common in young athletes known as Seavers disease or the fancy medical name calcaneal apophysitis, which is a swollen growth plate in the heel. Well, and these growth plates, as you mentioned, Joe, kind of various spots in the body, you know, that you mentioned the heel, but I know the shoulder up around that area, you often see that with these young athletes, 13 to 15 years old. They have to adjust to some pain there while that's moving on as well. Yeah, when we have, you know, the residents and med students rotate through on a regular basis in our place, we want them to see all these growth plate problems. And, of course, as a baseball coach, Mr. Horner would point out the shoulder and elbow one because he's worried about when a kid throws too many pitches at a certain age. So whereas Seavers peaks at about age 11, Little League elbow's a little older, about 13 or 14-year-old kids will get into that problem when they throw a lot. The elbow will be kind of dead arm or the shoulder. Both of those have growth plates, and they're both known as Little League shoulder and Little League elbow. But another one that coaches deal with quite a bit, if you work with young athletes, Ray, is one that's um, talked about a lot, is Osgood Schlatter's. And that's a growth plate below the knee, and kids will get a bump below the knee And when they play basketball or volleyball or jumping sports. And, oh, my gosh, terrible pain. They'll be in a, really a lot of pain. And in the old days, it was just take uh, medicine, you know, take uh, as much uh, ibuprofen as you can and try to keep playing. And that's not the best way. A lot of times we'll see these kids, and they have weakness, and they have, uh, then they start getting into mechanical problems. And later on, they can get into fractures and stuff. 
And so the best is getting to these things early, getting them on a good rest and rehab program. And because a lot of times it's our first time getting our hands on them, we use it as an opportunity to really improve their flexibility, improve their strength, improve their core. And we tell them, hey, if you really want to be a good athlete, this is the time to work on these things. You'll be a better athlete. And by the way, you'll reduce some of these overuse injuries to these growth plates that we see so frequently in pediatric sports medicine. All right, Joe. Great insight again this morning in the world of sports medicine. Always appreciate your time with us, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. I hope everything's going well in the holiday season and Christmas season over there with the Horner family. I know we're looking forward to it over at our place. Thanks. All right. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great week. You too. Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center at Akron Children's Hospital.